Hello everyone, Kyle here, and today we're going to be playing some Jurassic World Evolution 2. The goal for today will be to make a park as safe as it was in the Jurassic Park films, which if you turn the film off right before the bad bits, is pretty safe indeed. Ah, only joking. We don't do safe here, don't be silly. Instead, I decided that because I missed it the first time round, we're going to recreate the mass extinction of dinosaurs so that our guests can witness it firsthand. That sounds like a a wonderfully not too thought out idea doesn't it so grab a friend and slap a watermelon because it's park building time here we are in sunny old canada the year 2023 or whatever year it is when you're watching this Let, let's just say it's modern the first thing any good dinosaur park needs aside from dinosaurs i guess is a way for guests to arrive at the park and will satisfy this need with these lovely little helicopter pads yep okay so the idea is that we want a lot of them. I don't know if you gathered that already from me placing a number of them. The next thing we do is connect them all to a path. So we'll just go ahead and make a nice straight path. Perfect. Next, we'll just connect them all up like this. What? 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 Nice. The next thing we want to do is build the actual park area. I'm thinking we'll just make something like this. Not too big for the time being. We can always extend it if we need to. Spoiler alert, we don't need to. For now though, we just want a nice wonky square area. Okay, so this is our park, you see? Lovely. So the next step is to make a way for our guests to get from the arrival point to inside the park. That can be achieved with zip lines. Yes, zip lines. The most traditional of transportation methods if you are going from a high place to a low place. Me, I'm always in a low place, the so zip lines would be pointless. Unless of course there's a way to zip upwards, but I don't think even that would get me out of this hole that is my life. The real reason we choose zip lines over other more conventional transportation is it counts as a one-way entrance. And I do love trapping my guests for all of eternity, it's kind of a passion of mine. We'll put restrooms at the entrance too, because we want guests to feel like they're being looked after to up the star rating. On that note we'll also add some emergency shelters i don't plan on actually ever opening them but i like to create the illusion of safety next we'll just connect all these up with another famously perfect straight road rome would be proud of this one because romans used to build their roads straight that's why i said that okay so i think that's enough to make us the zippiest place on earth now we're going to make something for our zippers to see as they zoom across the sky i guess at this park people might expect to see dinosaurs can you imagine how cool that would be just like zipping along the wind in your hair and you look down and there's just this like long neck dinosaur like eating a leaf like yum, yum. and you're like wow how majestic wouldn't that be a truly magical experience for everyone well i couldn't find any dinosaurs just now so we're going to use goats instead i think that from a distance people still might think they're dinosaurs i mean who doesn't want to come to a dinosaur park and just zip line over goats tell me you don't want to do that tell me that doesn't excite you. Go on, tell me that doesn't. Let's add some trees to make the zipline more exciting. How are trees exciting, you ask? Well, you have to dodge them on your zip. That's pretty fun, isn't it? What I'm aiming for is making an experience for people to remember, and nothing sticks to people more than a healthy amount of trauma. Now we'll add in some restrooms along this path too. I'd be surprised if anyone needs to use them after the zip lines, but you know, they're there just in case. Now some emergency shelters great now we'll just lead the path over this way and here and this way yeah good now some rocks to spruce the landscape up aren't rocks solid <laughs> now we'll add in some water so the dinosaurs have a place to drink bathe and have water fights we'll add a pond here and a little something here do you know what i feel wild let's add a third body of water in and, and wait for it and a fourth <laughs> aren't we having fun today crazy fun right building time control center no science lab no expeditions no no staff center we don't care about our staff response facility now we're talking we'll have one of them only one though which can manage the entirety of the park now we'll add in a large hotel and a visitor center here which might inspire people to go this way now we'll add in a hatchery which is the most importantest of buildings as it allows us to introduce dinosaurs into this cesspool. So you basically hatch your dinosaurs in this building 
building and they come out of these gates. Because we are just testing for the moment, I will build a wonderful fence around this area to stop them free roaming. I just hope they can't squeeze through here. There we go. Tiny little rocks to block the big gap. Oh, what is this weather? Snowing? In Canada? Who would have taught it? So we'll add in a big restaurant area here. So we just need to repeat this now a bunch, which will probably take quite a while. So um, yeah, settle in and we're done. We'll now add in this monstrosity, which is kind of like the big boss of all buildings. It's an innovation center. Ah, oh, I sure as heck feel innovated now. Some guest attractions. Oh, there's loads to choose from, but you can only pick one. It's going to be a tough decision, but cinema it is. And we'll add a bowling alley. And I don't think any of the others are important. Let's have a look at the entrance of the park, see how things are getting on there. What? Why are there guests here? Why are you at a dinosaur park that has no dinosaurs? What's wrong with you people? I know they look like dinosaurs, but they're goats. Don't be fooled by this place. Ah, I mean, you know you're in Canada when you see the locals wearing hard hats and bulletproof vests as their everyday clothes. It's important to always be prepared against all those wild mooses. Mises? M moose? Mooses? How do you say more than one moose? Um, beavers. Let's just change it to beavers. Has anyone come over to the main park yet? Doesn't look like it. Oh, no, wait. Hold on to your moose. We have a visitor, but only a couple. What's wrong with you? Go on the zip line. Zippity zoom. Just zip line already. Just go. Go for it. Enjoy it. Enjoy life. Let go. Literally. Just not when you're on the zip line or you'll die. We don't have safety lines, so it's all on you, really. Anyway, our park looks great now. Very park like. Can't complain, really. Won't either. Now, at two and a half star rating, I think the next step is. Yep. Yeah. You guessed it. Dinosaurs. As you know, this seems to be a crucial ingredient that we are missing in our dinosaur themed park. First, we'll make some of these long boys as a test. Just have to release them into the wild. Well, kind of. Release them into this cage. Welcome to life. Sorry it's Canada and not some tropical paradise. But budgets being what they are, I hope you can adapt to the cold climate. Something tells me that dinosaurs would be good at adapting. Like, you know, they, they could evolve. I think the plan is to get a healthy amount of these long boys. Healthy to me, not so much to them. I can imagine the adverts now. S st step up one and all, come and see the dinosaurs. Yeah, look at these, at these dinosaurs right here. Oh, wow, these are definitely not goats. Not, not, not like that other park that tried to trick their guests. No, this, this is the real deal. Dinosaurs, they're like long and I bet it would be really annoying for them to put hats on. Apparently they're starving. Seems you need to feed dinosaurs. Oh, oh dear. Now they're getting hypothermia, which I imagine isn't a good thing for them. Oh no, they're getting frostbitten. What if it makes their heads fall off? That would probably be a bit of an escalation on the scale of bad things happening right now. On the upside, turns out hypothermic frostbitten dinosaurs are a big thing here in Canada. Look at all these sickos running over to see the dinosaurs dying. I mean, sure, I do own the park and their suffering is because because of me. But it's not like I've paid to come and see them suffering. Although I did charge you to come and see the suffering, so hmm, yeah. Do you know what? Let's just say it's no one's fault. Well, there's a dead dinosaur now, which isn't great. I don't know what to do with a dead dinosaur. Mind you, I don't know what to do with a living one either. Oh, right. We need to counter this harsh Canadian storm with some clever thinking. And I think I thunk just the thing. Don't judge my plan until it's finished, all right? It'll look a little silly in the beginning, but wait for it. Wait wait for it yeah yeah okay i'm done now yeah 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 i know i know it doesn't look like much but um you could put your heads over the fence and just rest them beneath the umbrellas, you know? D do you understand? Is, is is that a clear instruction to all of you? Huh? D did you just die? Yes, you did. You just died. Okay. Okay, that's good. Right, I think we can... Uh, what the heck was that? Let's check that in slow motion. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think I see what it was. That there looked like a weird dinosaur flamingo. But where did it go? I don't see it anywhere. Wait a minute. What on earth does that shadow belong? Long to. Look, there it is, in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, this is um, apparently a dinosaur. It seems I'm so bad at looking after and breeding dinosaurs.
dinosaurs that I made one that has no bones in his body. We'll call him Timothy. Timothy the dead boneless dinosaur. Ah yes, he's slowly returning to Earth. Come Timothy, it is safe down here. Ah, no, never mind. He has other plans. While Timothy gets used to his new environment, let's see what the park visitors think of our new attraction. Well, it certainly looks more terrifying from the ground. Why are you all running? What's wrong with you all? Don't pretend this sort of thing doesn't happen every single day in Canada. I know it does. You've never seen a Spaghettosaurus before? Let's send some helicopters in to clear this mess up. Uh, 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 okay, looks like we've just made another Timothy. The helicopters seem to be struggling to get the dead ones out. Maybe if we just use the other helicopter to fire into the mess and knock some of the living ones out, it might be easier to get the dead ones out as well. Yeah, yeah, this seems to be making things less hectic. Let's also get a helicopter to chase Timothy down and take him away. Your sole job in this park is to follow Timothy around until an opportunity presents itself for you to capture him. Do you know what? Let's not even call it a job because a job usually means it can get finished. This is more a way of life for you now. Anyway, we can finally start getting some of these dead dinosaurs out. But what I'm really curious about now is where are they taking the dead dinosaurs? It just seems a little strange to me that when they get their cargo, they all head in different directions. You would think there was some kind of facility where they would take them all to, you know, to burn them or, I don't know, dump them in a landfill. But now I'm convinced that they're just trying to find quiet places to dump the bodies out in the countryside. You know, like woodlands, fields, my friend Terry's house, that kind of thing. We'll add in one of these gyro rides now because I think it's that weird little ball from the films. And who didn't look at that thing and think, wow, what a stupid and uninspired transportation idea. It's nothing like a zip line. Why do the guests keep running away from the enclosure though? Don't worry, they're inside the cage still. Silly people. It's it's safe. I know what I'm doing, don't worry. Okay, there's a dinosaur on the loose. Danger everyone, danger, run for your lives. Quickly, someone call the ranger to stop this danger. We need to knock the dinosaur out before it hurts anyone. There we go, out like a light. Okay, we can't afford to have any more accidental escapes. That's just dangerous and I don't like danger. To prevent any more, we'll just introduce them directly into the public. You can't mark someone down for something done intentionally. Or can you? You probably can. Well, we're gonna do it anyway. So in order to finish the recreation of the extinction of dinosaurs, I spent a couple of hours digging this hole. I kind of forgot why, but it's there now. Let's just face the facts, shall we? There's also no dinosaur bones underground, which I find kind of odd. Makes me question if dinosaurs are even real. What is real? Is this abundance of guests in the park? I've also made one final modification to the park's design. I placed hatcheries all around the map. One hatchery for every species of dinosaur within the game. I know, it looks like a lot of hatcheries because it is. There's going to be a lot of hatching. Now we need to just release a couple of groups from each hatchery. I did originally try to release all of the groups per hatchery, but it just ended up crashing my computer over and over. So two groups seems like a safe number to work with. I say two groups, but each group can be anywhere between one and ten eggs, depending on the species. Now that we've released a couple of groups per hatchery, the real fun can begin. We're going to let the dinosaurs wipe each other off the face of this planet in a battle royale style fight to the death, all while giving and our guests the best view of it all, which is pretty much just amongst the dinosaurs unprotected. What could go wrong? As you can see from this satellite image, we have 800 plus dinosaurs already. We've also had our first death in the park. Congratulations, Kent, for letting your entire species down and dying first. Oh, wait, it's a joint position as the Igu have also died. Interestingly, the first kills were by the Indoraptor and Indorex, so I think they're going to be pretty big contenders in all of this. I mean, it's just madness. There's no way we're going to be able to follow every single fight as it happens, especially when there are dinosaurs just getting eaten instantly. I really don't have much hope for you guys at this point, unless you can kill your enemies by giving them digestive problems. It's good to see the people are enjoying the experience because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Making people happy. It really is just a mess of dinosaurs, though. I really don't know what's going on. The Giga Chad is just stomping on Taurus 
ghosts. Can you please watch where you're going? We don't want people to get hurt. Actually, do you know what? That was kind of fun to watch. So feel free to hurt the people, but wait until we're watching. Okay, so an update on the aerial satellite photos. And yes, it's just chaos. The APAT are doing what they do best, obliviously walking into things. You can't argue though with the views on the car tour, can you? You really do get an interactive experience with the dinosaurs. Uh, okay, our car seems to be malfunctioning. Well, we'll just leave it to do its thing. I'm sure the family inside will be just fine. I expect these watering holes will be hot areas for fighting, as dinosaurs battle for control over them. Oh, look, there's people inside the pen. Ha, 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 How the tables have turned. Now you're the ones on display for the world to come and stare at. Feels bad, doesn't it? No? The Indoraptor has claimed yet another victim. Something terrible has happened here as well, but we missed the entire thing. And this Allosaurus is apparently trying to convince other dinosaurs not to skip leg day. Oh, it's a battle between two leaf munchers. Someone must have sneezed on the salad bar. What? This wasn't even a fight to the death. Stop making us vegetarians look lame. Go kill and eat someone right this minute. Oh, there's going to be another battle here, except he's getting pulled away on business. Oh, nice. A little dinosaur versus a slightly bigger dinosaur. What the heck, man? Did you just spit on him? Where's the COVID marshal when you need them? Damn chavs are spitting on everyone. Yeah, you better run. This raptor's obviously late for something. Ho, ho, ho. He just barged that person over. He's like, move out the way. Move, move. I'm late. Move. I said move. I'm busy. I've got places to be. Dinosaurs to kill. Get out the way. See, you almost made them miss their three o'clock climb. They'd have lost their job if they didn't get to this massage on time. Oh, well, these raptors are certainly expanding business quickly. Talk about an aggressive business plan. They're just massaging people all over the place with um plenty of unhappy endings. Here's the real underdog of the dinosaur world, the mini Jeremy dinosaur. I'm rooting for these guys to take the win over every other dinosaur in this place. Damn it, you didn't even try. Now for a battle between the king, a T-Rex, and a Megalosaurus. <laughs> Nice. Uh, more like a mega lol. <laughs> now a mega lol versus a metrican. Metrican. Whatever, he's dead now. Ah, the mega lol. Redeeming his people one kill at a time. Well, this park so far has been a huge success because you can't argue with numbers like this. I mean, since I unleashed dinosaurs on the general public, the appeal has skyrocketed. It seems people really enjoy the opportunity to pet the dinosaurs from inside them. Either that or parents are just sending their unwanted children here. Either way, we're making people happy and I'm not one to judge. Another deep tissue massage underway. You raptors are too generous. And another carnivore versus vegetarian. Surprise, surprise. I'm not really holding my breath for my people anymore. They seem to just all die in one hit. What are you made of, jelly? Even their fighting looks lame. It just looks like they're slapping each other. Oh, go Jeremy, bite him his ankles. I'm still rooting for this guy to win it all. He is truly a terrifying beast. Ah, the Indoraptor has yet another kill. Another slap fight, I swear. If you don't kill each other, I'm done watching herbivores fighting. Nice. So, um, you give him a minor fracture and then you feel bad and you walk away. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes. The Indorex is also in with another kill. I think it's going to be down to this guy and maybe a couple more kind by the end. It's kind of a battle between nature and mankind in a sense. You know, as some doctor made the Indorex. The park is certainly starting to empty out now. So many dead ones. Mainly the herbivores. Stupid, stupid herbivores. The aerial view shows just how many deaths there are. And considering some of the bodies have probably despawned by now, it's an awful lot of dead dinosaurs. I mean, I don't know if they're bugged or actually just sissies, because it seems very strange to me that every herbivore is just dying in one hit. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, but you do run from bigger herbies, don't you? Now for a fight between the notorious T-Rex and the friendliest dinosaur known. The welcoming Allosaurus. This should be the T-Rex's win here. Or not. I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. I should really not pick sides. I'm just cursing them. Nice! I see the carnivores have chosen this place to be their fighting ring. Seems rather than battling over a watering hole, they're battling 
taking over control of the toy cars. This is truly an experience. Oh, they're literally just pushing them around now. You guys are supposed to be killing each other, not playing traffic cops. Oh, an Indo Rex versus a Qui Gon Jin. This is going to be the Rex's win for sure. Oh, or not. I'm wrong again. Kyle, remember, you're cursed. Stop picking sides or you'll kill them all. Maybe I can use this power for good rather than evil. You are both going to die, which is like, you know, reverse psychology, so they're going to survive. Ah, <laughs> see, um, only one of you died, so that was good, wasn't it? Now you can go and start a new life as a single parent. Enjoy your freedom. I think most of the herbivores are dead at this point, and the carnivores are starting to thin each other out nicely. What's strange is some of them have adapted their fighting styles. Now, instead of battling over strength, they're seeing who has the louder ringtone coming from within them. I think that's a sign of evolution. I'm starting to root for the Geiger Chad. He has had control over the toy car area for quite a while now. An aerial view shows just how low the numbers are getting. It's pretty empty compared to when it started, isn't it? That's kind of what happens. The numbers get lower. Oh, this such dinosaur is strutting his stuff in front of the Qui-Gon Jinn. He better have the goods too or he's gonna look silly. <laughs> and he's dead. That's what you get for showboating. Oh, these such dinosaurs seem to be quite aggressive now all of a sudden. They're even fighting each other. While the Gregory brothers fight one another, a battle to see who's stronger, I can see their other brother, also named Greg, is fighting the Indorex. It could be that the Indorex started an argument to distract them while he eats the other one. Mm, clever girl. The carnival toy car Grand Slam is still in full swing. Let's rope off some of the map to make it smaller. This will hopefully get the kills happening faster, as there's less places to hide. Hmm, seems the Giga Chads have returned to the car stomping ground. Nice, they've killed one of the Mega Lows. Apparently, these people here are unaware of the released dinosaurs altogether, and they're still just going about their day like nothing has happened. I mean, it's not like there's any clues around, you know, to the death and destruction. Oh, did you just kick a dead person? What a jerk. What an actual jerk. Wait here a minute. I need to go get something. Well, hello there. I'm back. Yes, I brought a friend with me. Oh, now you're scared and a lot of you are dying, but it will teach you not to kick a dead girl, won't it? I know that it was only one of you, but the rest of you just walked past and didn't even check her. Fine, fine, enough is enough. If you want the Indorex to leave you alone, and I know Indorexes, then come near the fence. Indorexes hate fences with a passion. There's no way they'll harm you if you're near it. Trust me, okay? Just listen. Oh, oh my god. Oh dear, I was wrong. I was so wrong. Get away from the fence. Don't go near the fence. It's only making him angrier. Get away from the fence or you'll die. Oh god, why? I shouldn't ever be in a position where people's safety depends on me. I told them it was a terrible idea. Quickly, someone call the Triceracops. Well, the end is nearing. That much is true. The numbers are at an all-time low. Project Extinction is almost at an end, but what dinosaur will come out on top? That's what I want to know. Was that even something we were checking? I don't know. But it is now. I'm so excited. This little guy is going strong, which surprises me. I thought he'd have been eating by now but no he's doing the eating you go little guy i still think you're going to win this whole thing call me an old romantic but you know unless you pick a fight with that indoraptor over there you should be just fine i said unless you pick a fight with that indoraptor don't pick a fight with him damn it what did i just say now you're extinct as well looks like the qui-gon jinn and michael Sierra are fighting there's also a car now in the geiger chad just watching and qui-gon jinn is victorious i like how all the the dinosaurs are just standing around the ring and roaring while their phones ring. It's just inspiring. It truly is. Sorry, Giga. Did I wake you? Sorry about that. The Indorex is still going strong. Look at the amount of kills he has. It's crazy. He's pretty much wiped out most of the species on his own by this point. The Indoraptor is still alive too and feeding on people. Hey, stop playing with your food. Let's make the map even smaller again. The numbers are thinning out even more. I think we need to make it so they go for each other now. We can do this by making the water sources smaller, so they all have to go to the same place in order to get their drink. Oh, the Indoraptor and the Indorex have finally met. This is going to be a battle and a half. Titan versus Titan. God versus... Uh oh, alright. 
um, he, he's killed him already. <laughs> oh, well, I was looking forward to that as well. Canada has decided to help thin the numbers out faster. Here comes a snowstorm. The Giga Chad is fighting an Allosaurus and he's made awfully short work of him. Good job, you Giga Chad. The Indorex is eating people to stay warm. That's using your brain. Here we are at the last water source in the entire park. The Rex is coming over to lay claim to it early. Akani is running over as well though. Two Giga Chads remain, which is probably the most of any single species. He's uh, okay. He's running off somewhere though, leaving his friend behind. Ah, I see. He was hungry. Just don't leave your friend too long, okay? Let's clear some of the buildings around the water area now and build a fence. One of the Giga Chads is fighting a Akani near the water. Looks like he's winning. I guess that's the end of the Carnies then. The map shows we're down to four dinosaurs. My guess is that some of them died during the blizzard or from swallowing too many phones. We've got two Giga Chads, one Indorex and whatever the hell this thing is. They're all making their way towards the watering hole. Oh, what's this? One of the Giga Chads are starting on the Indorex. I think if they fought him together, they could beat him. But alone, the Indorex will have it definitely. Oh, weird. The Indorex isn't even interested. He's left the Giga Chad alone. In a sudden turn of events, some tourists are being chased down by the Giga Chad and Indorex. Turns out you should have waited for me to finish building the fence before turning up to this event. Oh my, they'll be, oh, they'll be wanting a refund. Let's quickly fence them all in now. The final four dinosaurs, all within the final battle area. What an exciting time for dinosaur fighting fans. It seems the Indorex wasn't so happy about sharing those last tourists, so he's fighting the Giga Chad. Chad. This could narrow the competition down to three. That, yes, four, three. And it's all over for one of the Giga Chads. We'll make the zone even smaller. We need to force them to fight. The Indo and the unknown dinosaur are facing off with one another. Will this be a brawl or is it just a shouting match? Find out next week on Dinosaur Fight Place. Okay, well, we'll find out now. In a turn of events, the unnamed dinosaur has ran away, but the Giga Chad has stepped in. The indirect swipes, and it's a miss. The Giga Chad returns a blow, and it's another miss, so it wasn't even a blow. They leap, and I think they just punch one another with their tiny little arms, which must have been difficult because they don't have much reach. But I'm sure as heck they didn't bite each other because their mouths didn't make contact. It seems the indirect has punched the Giga Chad right in the throat, causing low health. The Giga Chad has walked away wounded, barely able to breathe. The unknown dinosaur has decided now is the time to strike. Perhaps while the Indorex has weakened, they will stand a chance of... Uh, never mind, they're dead. As for the Giga Chad, well, he's mortally wounded and um, it's decided it's better just to die alone, making the Indorex the victor. All hail the king of the dinosaurs, the Indorex. In the battle of humankind versus nature. Humans have won. Us, the dominant species on the entire planet. As for the Indorex, the victor of the dinosaur brawl, what shall the reward be? Well, I think we'll send them to a dog food factory. Oh yeah, we didn't become the overall dominant species by handing out flowers, did we? Humans gonna do what humans do. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching my midlife crisis unfold in the form of reenacting the mass extinction of dinosaurs. As much as I've hated every minute of it. If you'd like to see more of this game, then let me know in the comments below, or don't, whatever. For now, I'm going to dig through the brown mountains left by the dinosaurs and see if I can't find me some treasures. Until next time, toodaloo.